Hello and good evening everybody. Tuesday, Tuesday, March 14. Today, earlier today, much earlier today actually, in England, in the wonderful city of London, the long list for the International Booker was released. And, well, I made a very short video where I, where I sort of listed all the titles that are nominated, but I took a little closer look this afternoon and um, going to talk about the books and um, mostly the um, information that is available from the publishers and also my decision is that interesting to me or not so let's dive into it i had three out of 13 it's a Booker Dozen. Booker Dozen is not 12, it's 13. And I had three out of 13 were right, which means it's like a little less than 25%. That's pretty much okay. But let's do the list now. Now, the three books that I really predicted and that were correct. The first one is Standing Heavy by Gauze, translated from the French by Frank Wynne. This is a book about, from an author with roots in Cote d'Ivoire in the Ivory Coast, as it is also called in English. And it, this is about a generation of people who came to France as workers from Côte d'Ivoire from the 1990s, from the 1960s, 1990s, and 2010s. And it shows us the life of Ivorians in France, but also the changing of this country and the changing attitudes towards uh, migrants from Africa. Sharply, it says here, satirical, political and poignant, standing heavy is a searingly witty deconstruction of colonial legacies and capitalist consumption, an unprecedented, unforgettable account of everything that passes under a security guard's gaze. This sounds very interesting to me. The next book is sort of a personal favorite for me. I, uh, When I read about this book, I knew that I wanted to have it. Tried to order it today. Unfortunately, it's not available right now in Sweden, so I will have to wait a few weeks and then probably we already have a short list. But nevertheless, I always pick the books that I want to read and not let not a list, a long list, dictate me and tell me and order me what to read. So I'm not going to read the whole long list and I probably never will read a whole long list of an award because I have my own taste and my own decisions. But this novel is very interesting. Time Shelter by Georgi Gospodino from Bulgaria, translated by Angela Rodel and published at Weidenfeld and Nicholson. Um, this is a book about a time shelter in Switzerland. There is a um, home for people who have dementia, who have Alzheimer's. They have uh, several floors in that. Um, nursery home where people can go and visit their memories from the time they have or the memories they have forgotten and suddenly there are more and more people even people who don't suffer from dementia normal people with no normal functioning brains and they want to get into your home as well because the world outside is so uh, evil and so bad and was so negative like like our the time we live in so this is a time shelter and this is a great novel probably by time shelter by Time Shelter, it's by Georgi Gospodinov from Bulgaria. The third novel that I predicted right, I actually have it here. It's um, a Swedish novel. This is the original version. Uh, in English, it's called A System So Magnificent It Is Blinding. And it was written by Amanda Svensson and translated by Nicola Smolly and published by Scribe. And to show you the Swedish original, et system so magnifique at de blender. A little difficult to, to, to say that correctly. It's a long title. And it's about 500 pages long. I got it from the library today. I will take a look at it. This is about uh, three siblings born in 1989, triplets. Their father uh, has sort of disappeared. And 20 years after they were born, we have Sebastian, who is recruited to join a mysterious organization in London. And we have Clara, who has traveled to Easter Island to join a doomsday cult. And the third triplet, Matilda, is in Sweden trying to escape from the color blue, if that is possible at all. So these three are uh, forced to live totally different lives. They're forced to reunite because the father is missing. 
So this is uh, sort of interesting and um, let's see what this book is bringing. It's about 500 pages long as I said. Um, the next novel is called Boulder and the author is Eva Baltasar, translated by Julia Sanchez and published by a publisher called And Other Stories. Working as a cook on a merchant ship, a woman comes to know and love Samsa, a woman who gives her the nickname Boulder. When Samsa gets a job in Reykjavik, Iceland, and the couple decides to move there together, Samsa decides that she wants to have a child. She's already 40 and can't bear to let the opportunity pass her by. Boulder is less enthused but doesn't know how to say no, and so finds herself dragged along on a journey that feels as thankless as it is alien. With motherhood changing, Samsa into a stranger, Boulder must decide where her priorities lie and whether her yearning for freedom can truly trump her yearning for love. Once again, Eva Baltasar demonstrates her preeminence as a chronicler of queer voices navigating in a hostile world and in prose as brittle and beautiful as an ancient saga. Next novel comes from Guadeloupe and this is called The Gospel According to the New World by Maurice Condé translated by Richard Philcox and published by World Editions. I have the Swedish translation and the Swedish cover here. got it today in Swedish. It is called Nya Vadens Evangelium and was published last year. She has won the Alternative Literature Nobel, Nobel Prize here in Sweden, uh, Marius Conde, and she's the oldest author on this list with 86 years of age right now. One Easter Sunday, Madame Balandra puts her hands together and exclaims, A miracle! Baby Pascal is strikingly beautiful, brown in complexion with grey-green eyes like the sea. But where does he come from? Is he really the child of God? So goes the rumor and many signs throughout his life will cause this theory to gain ground. From journey to journey and from one community to another, Pascal sets off in search of his origins, trying to understand the meaning of his mission. Will he be able to change the fate of humanity? And what will the New World Gospel reveal? For all its beauty, vivacity, humor, and power, Marie's Condé's latest novel is above all a work of combat. Lucid and full of conviction, Condé attests that solidarity and love remain our most extraordinary and life-saving forces. Well, not really my piece of cake. I like the, um, of course, the goal to tell that love and solidarity are the most extraordinary life-saving forces. I agree with that, but it's not the story that I am probably reading. I will read a couple of pages and then uh, probably let it be. And uh, well, let's go on with Is Mother Dead by Victis Jut, translated by Charlotte Bachlund and published by Verso. This is a Norwegian novel. To mother is to murder, or close enough, thinks Johanna as she looks at the spelling of the two words in Norwegian. Because there's the word mur, M-O-R, and the word mord, M-O-R-D, which is more murder. And M-O-R, mur is mother. She's recently widowed and back in Oslo after a long absence as she prepares for a retrospective of her art. The subject of her work is motherhood and some of her more controversial paintings have brought about a dramatic rift between parent and child. This new proximity after decades of acrimonious absence, Reiner, set both women on edge and before too long Johanna finds her mother stalking her thoughts and Johanna starts stalking her mother's house. Could be interesting, but uh, not really convincing me. But the next one will be a novel that I am waiting for, but this is first published at the end of April. This is from Ukraine and this is Jimi Hendrix's Life in Lviv by Andrei Kurkov, translated from the Russian by Ruben Wooley, because Andrei Kurkov is a Ukrainian author, but his mother language is Russian, and he is a very fierce supporter of Ukraine, and, um, well, has also written a lot of pieces during this horrible war. But to the book, Jimi Hendrix's life in Lviv, Lviv, which is a city in western Ukraine. Strange things are afoot in the cosmopolitan city of Lviv. Seagulls are circling and the air smells salty, though Lviv is a long way from the sea. It really is. A ragtag group gathers round a mysterious grave in Lichakiv Cemetery, 
among them an ex-KGB officer and an aging hippie he used to spy on. Before long, Captain Ryabtsev and Alik Alisevich are teaming up to discover the source of the anomalies. Meanwhile, Taras, who makes a living driving kidney stone patients over cobblestones in his ancient Opel Vectra, is courting Darka, who works nights at a bureau de change despite being allergic to money. Their young, they young lovers don't know it, but their fate depends on two lonely and old men, relics of another era who will stop at nothing to save their city. Shot through with Kurkov's unique brand of black humor and vodka-fueled magic realism, Jimi Hendrix's life in Lviv is an affectionate portrait of one of the world's most intriguing cities. And that is interesting, although I don't really um, um, like magic realism that much, but this sounds so weird and it reminds me a little bit of the craziness I found in one of the greatest Russian novels of the 20th century, which of course is The Master and Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov. So I, I wait for this and uh, try to read it. Jimi Hendrix Life in Lviv. My God, that would be nice to see Jimi Hendrix Life in Lviv, wouldn't it? The Birthday Party by Laurent Mauvignier, translated by Daniel Levin Becker and published by the absolute winner of this long list of the international Booker in Translation, Fitzcarraldo Editions. They have three titles on the long list. Congrats, Fitzcarraldo. This is In deep rural France, little remains of the isolated hamlet of the three lone girls, save a few houses and a curiously assembled quartet. Patrice Bergogne, inheritor of his family's farm, his wife Marion, their daughter Ida, and their neighbor child Christine, an artist. While Patrice plans a surpri surprise, I was saying surprise, surprise for his wife's 40th birthday, inexplicable events start to disrupt the Hamlet's quiet existence. Anonymous, menacing letters, an unfamiliar car rolling up the driveway. And as night falls, strangers stalk the houses, unleashing a nightmarish chain of events. Hmm. Now we get to Germany. And, and, and that taught me something about the International Booker, because I thought, what? Is he nominated? Also from Fitzgeraldo Editions, but a 17-year-old novel. His first novel, his debut novel, he has written a couple of novels since then. This novel has already become a motion picture in Germany. Now, 17 years later, it is published in the UK and it's nominated. It's on the long list for the Booker. This is While We Were Dreaming by Clemens Meyer. The original title is Als wir träumten, translated by Katie Derbyshire and Fitzcarraldo editions. Rico, Mark, Paul and Daniel were 13 when the Berlin Wall fell in autumn 1989. Growing up in Leipzig, at the time of reunification, they dream of a better life somewhere beyond the brewery quarter. Every night they roam the streets, partying, rioting, running away from their fears, their parents and the future, fighting to exist, killing time. They drink steel cars, feel wrecked, play it cool, longing for real love and true freedom. Startlingly raw and deeply moving, While We Were Dreaming, is the extraordinary debut novel by one of Germany's most ambitious writers, full of passion, hope and despair. And 17 years after his debut, he's nominated for the Booker. Congrats, Clemens. Herzlichen Glückwunsch to you. And this is the one I'm going to read. Uh, probably in German, because um, it's my native language, my mother tongue. And Clemens Meyer, I always wanted to read Clemens Meyer because he's such a famous writer. And he's, I think he's writing in the kind of genre, in the kind of um, corner where I am feeling very cozy and welcome. The next book is Pyre by Paramal Murugan, translated by Ani Rudan Vasudevan and published by Pushkin. Saroya and Kumaresan are young, in love and in danger. They meet in a small southern Indian town where Kumaresan works in a soda bottling shop and quickly marry before returning to Kumaresan's family village. But they are harboring a dangerous secret. They belong to different castes and if the villagers find out, they will both be in grave peril. Faced with venom from her mother-in-law and pointed new questions from her new neighbors, Saroya struggles to adjust to a lonely and uncomfortable life. Kumarizan throws himself into building a new soda business, hoping to, to scrape together enough money for them to start over 
somewhere new. But as vicious whispers encircle the couple, will their love be enough to keep them safe? It's not finished yet. It goes on with more interesting and beautiful titles. Stillborn by Guadalupe Nettel, translated by Rosalind Harvey, published by number three, Fitzcarraldo editions again. Stillborn is Guadalupe Nettel's fourth novel, explores one of life's most consequential decisions, whether or not to have children. With her signature charm and intelligence, Alina and Laura are independent and career-driven women in their mid-thirties, neither of whom have built a future around the prospect of a family. Laura has taken the drastic decision to be sterilized, but as time goes by, Alina becomes drawn to the idea of becoming a mother. When complications arise in Alina's pregnancy and Laura becomes attached to her neighbor's son, both women are forced to reckon with the complexity of their emotions. In prose that is as gripping as it is insightful, Stillborn explores maternal ambivalence with a surgeon's touch, careful dissecting the contradictions that make up the lived experience, says of women. Mm, no. Good novel, probably, but not for me. And the last, the last one, I would have loved, dear Book of Fellows, to have this one on the list. Cocoon by Zheng Yiran from China, translated by Jeremy Tiang. But my dear friends who watched this video, can I get three and a half points? Because I predicted a translator correctly. Because this cocoon is translated by Jeremy Tiang and the novel, the last novel nominated for the International Booker is Ninth Building by Zhu Ying Shi from China, translated by Jeremy Tiang and published by Hanford Star. So these are my 3.5 points. Ninth Building is a fascinating collection of vignettes drawn from the author's experience growing up during the Cultural Revolution, first as a boy in Beijing and then as a teenager exiled to the countryside. Zhu poetically captures a side of the Cultural Revolution that is less talked about, the sheer tedium and waste of young life, as well as the gallows humor that accompanies such desperate situations. And yes, 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 I am in to read another translation by Jeremy Tiang. I so much enjoyed this book, Cocoon, and this actually is partly about the consequences of the Cultural Revolution to future generations. And now to have a book like Ninth Star, which goes back to the Cultural Revolution, is enormously educating and very interesting to me. So the books that I favor on this list are Standing Heavy by Gauls from France, the novel about immigrants from Côte d'Ivoire in Paris, France. Time Shelter by Georgi Gospodinov, an absolutely must read. Jimi Hendrix, Life in Lviv by Andrei Kurkov. Then we have While We Were Dreaming, Als wir Tronten von Clemens Meyer by Clemens Meyer, translated by Katie Derbyshire from Fitzcarraldo. Try to read that in German. I will, I think, order it in Germany tonight. And finally, Ninth Building by Zhu Ying Shi, translated by Jeremy Tiang. These are my choices. The other ones are not so interesting to me. Tell me what is interesting for you. Are you reading the whole long list? Are you doing it? The whole long list, the Booker Dozen, the 13 novels, plus the 16 from the Women's Prize, 29 books. I will never do that because I'm sort of, uh, I want to be free. I want to break free. Break free from the awards. No, awards are great and I love them because they always give me recommendations, but not all of them, not the whole list. I pick them. I pick some books and each award gives me really the big awards. They always give me some ideas for future reading, but I would never read a whole list. So Booker, so Women's Prize, don't ever send me your long lists for free and in advance because I won't read the whole long list. Send them to other people. Thank you very much for watching this video. I see you maybe tonight, um, maybe tonight um, again with another video that I publish tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. And this will be uh, a review of a single book. See you. Have a great evening and bye.